Listen, if you love 90s music, then you love the group Brownstone. And I have one of the members of the group tonight, the one and only Nikki Gilbert. Hey, Nikki. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Sean. How are you, sir? I'm good. I wish I had a smile like yours. That's what I'm thinking right now. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, when I was little, I tried to hide it. Them big old teeth, all of them. I opened them. But See, I, I wear it with pride now. <laughs> See, it, it, it isn't amazing how the thing you used to be ashamed of becomes, becomes the thing you come on TV and people celebrate you for? Yes, sir. It that's is. why That's it why I say to people, keep on living. Eventually, they're mm -hmm. going to celebrate you for that. Come on. Come she, on. She said, come on. <laughs> I love Eventually. you already. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. I love you already, Nikki. Listen, let me ask you that because I... I, I, I I get the sense that this question has been uniquely given to me by the universe to ask you. What always brings you joy? Oh, Jesus, creativity. Whenever mm. I am in a space of just, uh, I'm like, okay, but maybe we could, you know, and I just, I, I talk myself down through putting it into something creative. Um, and I don't know if that's healthy or not, but it's worked for me and, I, and I'm in a good, a pretty good space. Look, if it's working and, and, you're, not, you're, and, and, and you're not killing anybody right. or yourself. No, man. no. Creating things. And, 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 you know, obviously it's not cr about creating things for me, creating things that I help, I think can help other people. And, and I know this sounds cliche and I know it's the woo hoo hoo thing that a lot of people say, but the thing that really does give me the most joy is like cooking food and enjoying somebody, watching somebody enjoy eating it. I'm I'm that oh, girl. So with that. art, with content, with whatever you like it. Oh, it's dope. Oh, oh, good. That's good for me. No, I I I think that that's <laughs> I think that's one of the best answers I've ever gotten to that question. Oh, um, thank you. Because it, it does not get more basic than food, and it does not get more human than providing food for other people to eat and live and wanting them to enjoy. Yes. So that was yeah. a great answer. So let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Who can okay. you always rely on, Nikki Gilbert? Who oh, Jesus? Um, now you you gonna probably eat me up for this one. Uh -oh. Um, myself. No, I like that. <laughs> I mean, it, it. I know, like, oh, no, nah, you got to rely on something. No, no, no. no say I more. Say more. Okay. <laughs> um, I am the most familiar with me. Um, mm. I understand the many faces of me. Um, I understand which versions of me I have to go to in times of need. I, I understand love it. That the most important part of me is centering myself and understanding who I am. And then I go outward and talk, either talk to a therapist or a close friend or vent or whatever. But the first conversation I have in a crazy space is with myself. I, first of all, I'm not getting on you about that. I love that answer. That, that, I, got, I think I woke up this morning to hear that answer. That's how good that was. Because you're right. The, the one person you, you better be able to count on is yourself. And, and, all, all, and all other places are sinking sand. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So, so let me stop. You're giving me great answers. It makes me want to ask you more questions like this. So here, but here, but here's my last one before, before I, 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 try, I, try, I try to get into the journey. Um, yes. Do me a favor. Take, take, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. All right. Exhale. Um, and to answer this question, what do you long for? Peace. Hmm. Say more about that. Um, I long to understand that as long as my intentions are good, I can relax, I can breathe, I can go into the moment knowing that I have no control over the outcome. Mm -hmm. And being okay with that and not figuring it out. You know, it's like when you meditate, they say, just don't think of anything, just count, just think of your breath, just appreciate where you are right now. And I'm trying to accomplish a wholeness in that. I'm trying to really just be able to be in the middle of any storm and just really be like, but I'm here and I'm breathing and this is what, and I want to get to that ultimate goal. And that's beautiful. It's a beautiful answer. Yeah. I, I'm, thank you for that. And I, I'm, there are people out there tonight who needed to hear that uh, mm -hmm. and, and needed to be, or, or at least needed to be reminded of it. Let, let's change directions all together. Cause now here's, here's a question from a totally opposite direction. Um, okay. what, why, why are people <laughs> still so fascinated with nineties music? Like nineties music, what? You know, I mean, the kids, the, the little millennials, the Z's, 
whatever they are. <laughs> they, they just, what, what is it about 90 music? Um, because there was pure soul in it. Because we were so closely connected to that good old 70s music. We were so connected to that good old Motown 1950s music. Like our parents introduced us to the things that, the, that I guess and I hope that the millennials and the Gen Z's parents are introducing them to. Because soul is real. And um, it's funny, I'm going to go on a limb and say this. My brother James DuBose told me what's real speaks to the heart. And I think that soul music is something that speaks to the heart. And I think that people know what's good and what's real. When they hear it and, and it penetrates the soul. It's a universal language, so they hear it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> I, I I think you're right. I my, my answer would have been because 90s music was the first expression of music that did not come directly from a reaction to white people. Ooh. I like that one too. Although, 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 I must beg to differ. It was some records in the '90s that came out as a result of what was. I mean, okay, wait. Maybe I got your. Maybe I have that. Yeah, wrong. let me let me let me let me explain let me, it. To, okay. Yeah, let me clean it up. I'm not okay. saying that we were not we were not fighting against. No, you got you got okay. you okay. got Public Enemy. You got brand yes. new Tupac. brand new beer. Yeah, right. right. Tupac. Exactly. But it was Don't not a reaction to them. It was it was a reaction to our self consciousness. Yes. Our yes. self consciousness. Yes. Was, was the thing that was producing this music. Whereas I think in the music of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, it was still tethered to something about whiteness, right? Where, where, whereas we yeah. were, we were, I think in the 90s, because because I'm, I'm, I was in college in the 90s. Um, we, we were in the 90s, you know, saying, look, our parents fought that battle and they won. And, mm. and we are determined to decide what, how we are going to live. I can I, I can absolutely agree with you there. However, I think some of the the, the biggest uh, records connected to the civil rights movement. Um, when you talk about Bar, there's so many Earth, Wind, and Fire. When you talk That's about true. those lyrics and those, That's it's like okay, I'm sorry, Doctor Sean. It's you win, you win, you win. Yeah, I'm it's, saying. It's, 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 look, you, Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, that you was win, you win. To it's, it's, right, yeah. You win, you win, Nikki. Okay. This is what you do. This is not what I do. This is what you do. As soon as you said Bob Marley and Marvin Gaye, I lost. As soon as you said Bob Marley, my point was destroyed. Let's take a break. Because yes, Nina Simone, what you talking about? What Nikki, is going really? on? Can we stop? Can we stop? Let's take go to break, Kevin. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you what Nikki and I. Billy Holiday, about. Strange Fruit. Come on now. No. <laughs> See, you back on that. You back on that. Talk, talk to me about Brownstone. How, how, how did yes. this happen? Uh, divine intervention. Mm, no other two so? ways to say it. Um, well, I'm gonna give you the short story because the other one is in this book we finishing, but I'm gonna give you some meat and potatoes. So long story short, moved to California, saw Dead Poet Society. One of my best friends from drama was like, we gotta seize the day. We gotta do it while we're, we're young. I can say it now, use my Pell Grant to move to California with just nothing literally but a wing and a prayer and my godmother who I'd never met, but I knew she was there. So we struggled, struggled, struggled. I put an ad in the drama log remember the drama log, um, mm. saying that I was looking for singers. Um, I said, you know what? I, I, I truthfully was born out of, out of my insecurities at the time. I had done some auditions. I'm just gonna go and say it. I auditioned for <laughs> Teddy Ross, um, a couple, and, and I was hugely overweight and they were, they were honest, you know, they were like, you know, you, you got a cute face and got a great voice, but we're, we're building a package and you don't fit into that package. Then I went and auditioned for a group with Tammy Roman. And that's how me and Tammy became cool. Cause Tammy was like, I want you in the group, but they don't want you in the group because you don't look like a supermodel. So I was like, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna go start my own. And um, I went and put an ad in drama log, Maxi, Mimi, initially we were five. Walking down the street in Melrose one day and a guy, a white guy by the name of Shep Solomon, was like, oh my God, you're beautiful. Maxie was absolutely gorgeous with this long Ma Naomi Campbell hair. Like I'm doing a video, my parents are funding it. Lucky him. Could you be my model? I was like, go, I'll go with you. I got your back. I'll be like your manager, right? <laughs> so I went, we did this video, car broke down. This was the first, first example of faith in the truest sense and, and how important that was. Car broke down, they had to catch the light so everyone left. I stayed behind with a young guy whose parents were financing the video so that I could like 
you know, shoot the breeze, tell them what we do. So no one came to pick us up. We walked off the freeway. We were way out in the desert past Banning, California, uh, went into a bar. He told some men in a bar, I got $250 to take you for anybody who could take me back to LA. They wanted me to jump in the back of like an El Camino. I was like, are you crazy? What is that? I'm not doing it. So he left me. I stayed behind with him. He left me. I cried. I prayed. I called Mimi. She came and picked me up. Two days later, the guy who asked Maxie said, I want to make it up to you. I want to take you to have um, a, a meeting with this guy, Barry Kolsky. Barry did the courtesy meeting. We sang some songs for him. He said, thanks. Now we're looking for it. We were on our way out the door. On the way out the door, these women said, what was that upstairs? Me and my Detroit energy. Oh, that was us singing songs we wrote, you know, blah, blah, blah. Sing it for us. Sang it for Marla and Linda. Two weeks later, she introduced us to Jerry Greenberg. And after that, we were signed to Michael Jackson's label. Wow. <laughs> I was trying to get y'all the short version. I don't know. Wow. Like, you know, but yeah. That, so, that's, uh, a, that's a hell of a story. Yes. And, yes. and, 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 and what did that journey teach you? It taught me that going back to what I said earlier, um, all you can do is come from the right place. All you can do is have good intentions about things. I was young. I had a little Detroit chip on my shoulders. You know, I just knew I wanted to succeed. I knew I was a good person. I had talent and I was just going to pursue it that way. And I wasn't going to allow, I was using the, the rejection as, as fuel, as power to, I'll show you. And I've sort of used that throughout my career. When, when I heard your story, I thought I thought something additionally mm -hmm. as well. Your, yeah. your story reminds me that nobody can curse what God has already blessed. Ooh, come on with that. Yeah, nobody. Yes. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can leave her in the desert. Nobody yeah, can that's stop. That's literally her. where I was, in the desert. Little girl from Detroit, like, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no phone. What am I doing? And oh, the part that I forgot was as I was crying in the middle of the desert, walking out of this bar in the middle of the small town, I was like, Lord, what, how, where am I going to go? Police station, pay phone right in front of me mm. on my yeah. life. And I had Mimi's number. So that was that. I'm telling you, I'm telling I think, I think, I think if, you, if, you, if you put both of what we said together, you get, you get, you get a complete thought. If your intentions are in the right place and yeah. your heart is pure and good, it's going to work out. Because nobody can curse <laughs> what it. God has already blessed. Let, 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 let me let me ask you this. Um, I, I I was talking to Tweet earlier, as you know, because you guys are both, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 90s music mega, yes. uh, me mega stars. Um, and his journey uh, was one of great sacrifice. And it was one mm -hmm. of, of, you know, it comes with all of the machinations that that greatness demands of us all. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what 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 did the journey cost you? Um, I, I think, ooh, that ooh, that's so loaded. It's so loaded, and and it's loaded because, I, you know, if you ask me that at different phases in my life, I can answer that from a time when I felt like the journey really cost me something. I could say. Oh, the loss of Maxie, which is the most tragic loss of my life. My parents was was awful, awful, awful. But Maxie was just something I didn't think I could come back from. But I understood that God was bringing me to my knees to make me pay attention to something so much more important than myself. So it's hard for me to talk about, the, you know, and, and, and yeah, shit hurt. I'm sorry. Stuff hurts. Sorry. Things hurt. Um. But I think that's a part of the dues that we sort of pay to live this life that allows us to see more than the little girl in the hood getting molested by her father or the woman who's getting, you know, like I always go to, really, this is your problem, you know? And not to the point where I don't allow myself to grieve it or, or let it out or cuss somebody out or whatever, but just really having to center myself again and be like, you're good. You know, if, if that was the dues you paid, there's so many things that have happened that I can look to and be like, this happened to me and this was wrong. Well, it fueled me being more interested in helping other people. So that's a, that's a way bigger deal than what I had to sacrifice. Yeah, no, that's, that's an interesting answer. It's an interesting answer. I get, I get from you that you are a woman who is saturated with perspective. I guess. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I always, no, 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 I, no. I've, I've been an eternal optimist, I think, since I came here with the DNA. I mean, I'm like, 
you know, I was always the one, don't fight, come together. And I think that that has led me in my life. I, I never had a problem with any of my aunts when all my other cousins fell out. So I think that's just a part of who I am and I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, no, I, I, let, let me let me, let me me say that. And I don't mean this the wrong way. Um, that wasn't a question. <laughs> I would oh. I wouldn't ask I wouldn't ask him a question. <laughs> okay, okay. There I go. Running my mouth. Okay. I was I was I was really, you know, observing yeah. your yeah. ability to stand in the middle of your life and look mm. into the past at what it has been. And tonight I've asked you to look into the future for what you hope for. And you had this ability to have command over language in both directions. That to me says you have perspective. Oh, thank you. That's huge from you. Thank you. Yeah, see there? I may not know music. <laughs> Learn how to take a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I may not know music, but I know how to do this. Right. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 